And then, yeah, I, I, I'm an epidemiologist, and, and so, you know, people tell me, right, you know, I've read lots of pop psychology, and it says, you know, stories are the only way to disseminate results, but I want to see some evidence, and, and, and there is evidence. There's evidence from randomized trials that if you want to change physician behavior, stories are more effective. So th this was a, quite a large randomized trial, 20,000 patients, and they wanted to get pe physicians in the United States to, to stop, um, to give opiates. They weren't giving opiates because everybody was worried about addiction, but they, they, they had two, two ways of persuading them to have behavioral change. They, they told them stories and they told it in the usual way, and if they told them stories, they were much, like, much more likely to change behavior, much more likely to visit the site and want to know more information. So stories really work. So we realized that we needed a story for tranexamic acid, right? We, did, we had to find a story. Now, unlike, unlike pharmaceutical companies, we felt the story had to be true. You know, we wanted to tell true stories about, about treatments rather than, you know, made up stories. So we, we found one in Japan. So when we, when we did the trial, um, after we got the result, I had no idea where tranexamic acid came from. I just, as far as I was concerned, it was just a drug. But after we did the trial, I said, to, I said to, I, I thought, well, let's find out where tranexamic acid comes from. So I started Googling and searching, and then my search, my search, my search, and then it all, every, everything started going into Japanese. And so I, and I, uh, and I said, oh, you know, I can't, I can't find where this came from. But my wife's Japanese. So I said, will you investigate this? And so she started searching, and she found out that the, the drug was invented by a husband and wife couple called Shosuke and Utako Okamoto. And they, they worked in Kobe um, in the 1950s. and Well, they worked in Tokyo first, in Keio University, and then they moved to Kobe. And they first published this in September 1962, uh, on the 1st of September 1962, they published their discovery of this new drug, tranexamic acid, in the KO Journal of Medicine. Very low impact factor. <laughs> I don't think they worried about impact factor in those days. But I think it did slow the, the, the uptake of this treatment around the world, the fact that, you know, it was invented in Japan. Um, because it became very popular in Japan, but, not, but the rest of the world didn't seem to know about it very much. So, um, we said, we found out that Shosuke had died, but Utako was still alive. So the woman who invented this drug, it was a husband and wife team who invented this drug, Utako was still alive. We said, let's go and see her. Let's go and see this woman. And, and she lived in Kobe, you know, this big, you know where this is. And, and her house was up on this hill over here. So we thought, right, let's go and see her. And very unusual home. This was her house, you know, like her, her, it was just an ordinary residential area. And we, we came across her house, you know, Kobe projects on thrombosis and hemostasis. We thought, well, that's an interesting name for your house. <laughs> you know, not many people call your house. This is my son. He's, he's, he, he's, he's older now, of course, but he, he was my research assistant because I didn't have any funds. Um, and then he, and there, here she is, Otoko Okamoto. So she was 94, 94, but she was really Genki. Um, you know, she was 94. She still, these were her researchers, um, and they still met in her house to, t to talk about research projects. When she retired, she didn't, she didn't believe in retiring, you know. So when the university kicked her out at, 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 at I don't know what, age 60 or 65, she just turned her house into her laboratory and carried on working at home. And, um, and these are her research staff. And they were still publishing papers and reading papers. I just thought, my goodness, this woman is fantastic. Um, and I, I wanted to know all about her. And, you know, here she is. This is um, 
Shichigo san no, no Shashin. So I think she's about seven here. And this is something like uh, 1920s in Japan. So this little girl wants to be a doctor, right? She wants to be a doctor when she grows up. Now that's very unusual of itself in 1920 in Japan. A little girl wants to be a doctor, you know? She doesn't want to do the washing for her husband. <laughs> you know, what's wrong with her? But she was very bright, super bright girl, right? She wanted to be a doctor when she grows up. So she goes to medical school and here she is doing dissection. And, um, and afterwards, you know, she really wants to get into basic science. She loves, she loves science. So this is her in her laboratory and that's her husband. So she marries another researcher um, and, and they're working together in the laboratory. That's their daughter. Right? So in those days there was no childcare. So they, they brought her daughter to the, to the laboratory with her. Um, she told me an interesting story that the daughter was in a, a bassinet, in a little cot on the floor, and she nearly killed her daughter because she was making a poisonous gas on the, on the bench, and the, and the gas was heavier than air, and it rolled off, and it rolled off onto the floor, and then the baby started going red and crying and, you know, and looking like she was in trouble. And so she managed to rescue the daughter. The daughter's okay, but strangely enough, she's an anaesthetist now. In, in Tokyo, so um, uh, uh, no, she lives in she lives in uh, in, in Kyoto actually. Um, so she told me about her objectives, and um, they decided they had three research objectives: to outperform global standards, to avoid current trends, and to find an effective treatment for postpartum hemorrhage. So. I thought, wow, that's fantastic, because outperform global standards in post-Second World War Japan, right? So Japan had just been two nuclear bombs, you know, everything in, in ruin, and they didn't want to be the same as the world, they wanted to be much better than the world. And avoid current trends, I like this one. I, I really in, try and take this advice in my work is that when everybody's looking at something, medical research is very about fashion. So everybody's, you know, gene editing, you know. While everybody's gene editing, go and do something else. Because it's much easier to find something where everybody is not looking at the same thing. You know, they're much more likely to miss something over there. So she recognized that, avoid current trends. And they were very interested in finding an effective treatment for postpartum hemorrhage because at that time, Japan was like, you know, South Asia, Africa. You know, women had their babies, started bleeding, and died. Now they don't. You know, they've got much better nutrition, much better healthcare. But in those days, it was much more difficult. So she had these. Um, so here she is doing uh, research on a laboratory animal. I think it's a dog, and this is the family you would feel very insecure being the family dog. <laughs> you know, you feel very nervous. Kincho, you know. You feel very nervous being the dog in that family. But actually, that, the dog was safe. This dog was safe, at least. Um, and they got an award. They, got, they won awards and things. And, um, and you know, uh, they were nominated for a Nobel Prize. They didn't get one. Um, there's a time capsule. I don't know if you know about time capsules, but there, there, there's like, at that time, people were like gathering things together that represented the, the sort of major discoveries of humanity. And then they bury them in the ground in the hope that, you know, in 200 years, people would dig them up and see, you know, what, what was humanity doing 200 years ago? Well, tranexamic acid is buried in one of these... Um, in, in Osaka, in one of these time capsules. Um, and we gave her a certificate on behalf of the, of the crash collaborators for, for making this invention that seemed to be so effective in, in trauma. And then we realized that this woman was the story we were looking for, you know, that this woman's life was really incredible, you know, and, and she told me all sorts of things how she, um, why she, 
just fantastic. Uh, and it, it's a story of perseverance, of really working hard. So, she, you know, all through her life, you know, from seven to 97, a hundred years of work, and then we, you know, we find this effective treatment for trauma. At that time, she, I, I, she, you know, I, I said to her, we've got this great treatment for trauma. She said, I don't care about the trauma. Well, I, I do care about the trauma, that's great, but what about postpartum hemorrhage? Why haven't you tested it in postpartum hemorrhage? Um, we did a, we, so she, we decided that she was a, a, our story, and it was a story about perseverance. It's a story about, you know, just continuing to, to try and try and try all of your life. Um, we did other things. We, we, made, we made manga. Uh, we made a manga for emergency physicians. And um, this got in the New York Times as well. Um, and, and I wrote to the, to the director general of the BBC to complain about him advertising to complain about the use of, of this drug, the, the wrong drug being promoted it, it, on the television. And I managed, eventually managed to get our drug. So we finally got tranexamic acid onto the television. 